Well, that was bound to happen at some point. Hmm. Hey everyone, how's it going? So yes, this is a KS0 Pro. If I pull it on back here just a little bit, like this, there you go. Ice River KS0 Pro. This is not mine though. This is Serpent X Tex. And he was actually expecting this to happen at some point. The center pin actually burned out and came out of the connector. But what happened is way more than 10 amps. These barrel jacks are only rated for 10 amps maximum. That's it. So he had this overclocked. I think either the 280 giga hash or maybe even the 320 giga hash. Either which way. And he was running it at 12 volts. That's why there was so much amperage running through this plug. It doesn't matter that he was using a veteran miner 12 volt to a barrel jack adapter. That part wasn't the problem. The problem is these barrel jack connectors are only rated for up to 10 amps. And honestly, you really shouldn't run them under or over 8 amps. That 80% that rule applies to connectors as well. So he was actually testing with this to see what would happen in the long term. Now you can run 12 volts on these and over amperage like 15 amps, which is what he was running through this uh, for a little while. Uh, it actually lasted longer than we expected, but it's not an if. It's a when it's going to fail. Thankfully, the center pin just came out. His son accidentally knocked the cable. It came right on off, and that was the end of it. No big deal. No fire, no smoke, no nothing. So what we're going to do today is I have right here from DigiKey. You want to pause that and get the product number and everything off of it. We have replacement barrel jacks. Never buy one. Always have a backup if the first soldering doesn't work correctly. You can always go. And these are only like two, three dollars each from DigiKey. So we're going to open this on up, get this uh, circuit board onto a holder, and we're going to hot air remove the old one and install a new one for him. Okay, so we got the circuit board out. You can see the 12 little ASIC chips cleaned off all the little pink goo that comes from uh, Ice River. And it's nice and clean. Here's the bottom side of that connector. You can see there are a total of six connectors, three and three, that are soldered through the board itself. Flip it over, we can see the rest of it. And the only other thing that's in the way, basically, is this capacitor, which shouldn't be too much of an issue, hopefully. But what we're going to do, we need to put a bunch of heat to here because you see this right here, this lighter green. This is all one big copper plane underneath here, and it's going to act like a heat sink. So that's why this would be very hard to do with a soldering iron, and you really need to use hot air to really soak this area of heat. We sh These right here are fuses. They should be okay with the heat. Hopefully I don't mess them up. If so, I guess I'm buying some more stuff from DigiKey. But... We're going to try to limit it. I'm going to try blasting the air downward a little bit so I don't go directly on it. And just heat up these six pins and literally just take pliers, or sorry, pliers, tweezers. Shove them in the hole and pull down with a little bit of force once I lock this board into place. And once this solder gets hot enough, because I'm sure it's a lead-free solder, it should just pop off. Finally, how oh, freaking time it came out. It only took about eight and a half minutes. So yes, it is finally out. It has cooled down now to the point where I can at least touch it. It's still got some heat into it. This was just a heat shield, so hopefully we didn't uh, mess with the uh, fuses behind here. Here's the old unit, and you can see how that center pin is just falling apart in there. And here is one of the replacements, all nice and brand new and happy. So... I tried taking a soldering iron and trying to wick out the solder in here, but there's just so much heat sink ability here with all the copper pores everywhere. It took that long to heat it up just so I can get it out of there. So what I'm unfortunately going to have to do is just put a lot of flux on it, hit it with the uh, hot air, and push the new unit back in, and hopefully it'll melt and everything else and fudge with it at that point. So give me a few minutes. I'm going to get this set up and see what we can do. Okay, so before we hot air reflow this again and try to get it hot enough to melt the solder inside these pins and push the new one in from below, I'm also going to add in some of this 247 solder. I've had this for a while. It's a low temp solder. Um, it says it melts right around 137 C, 278 degrees Fahrenheit, 42% um, tin, 
or 50, yeah, 57% bismuth and AG gold, silver, 1% silver. Um, no clean flux, 87% metal, yeah. Um, yeah, that expired two years ago. It still works. Doesn't matter. What the idea here is, is to mix this in with the um, no lead solder here that takes a really high melting point and it should mix and help this melt at a lower temperature thus allowing it to push in better so we're going to add a little dab to each little spot here and we'll get ready to apply some heat there and get ready to push in the new unit so let's see uh if i screw this up for serpent or if i get it right you can just start seeing it turn the metal now because we finally heated up the uh, pcb enough for that low temp solder to start melting so that means we're probably about a third of the way there it's this tip spot right here i want to melt there we go it melted we are seated gotta hold it here for a few seconds just to make sure it re-solidifies correctly there we go let's let it cool down Okay, cleaned up the solder job, got rid of any little solder balls that might have been from the low temp solder paste. Let's just double check before we put it all together that there's no shorts between positive and ground. Nope, we're good. Otherwise we get a beep. Nope, that's good. Let's look at the other side. So if I take this, you can see it real good there. There's a new connector. And perfectly clean on the other side. I think we're ready for reassembly. Let's get the rest of this pink schmutz out of here. Mm. Is it me or does that look like Pepto Bismol? So now it's time to repaste. I'm going to be using this Prolima Tech PK3. I've had pretty good results with it so far. So let's go ahead. Now I don't know if it really helps at all, but you see how you have the two lines that correspond with your two heat sink lines right here. For some reason, you actually have an extra little heat spreader right here. I usually put it through a little dab on there. It's not going to hurt it. It will make contact. It might transfer a little bit more heat out. Who knows? So let's go ahead and reinstall this board. And put the eight springed screws back in. I like to get them all in first and then I'll torque them down. And this way the board can fl float a little bit and find its center spot. Okay, now for a torque down. Okay, that handles that part for right now. Let's get the top. I think he threw these just in the interim because he was inside the unit. These are not actually good pads. We usually use one and a half millimeter. I think these were just thrown in there for the heck of it for right now because he knew I was going to repair it. So let me get some one and a half millimeter pads. Now for putting on the one and a half millimeter pads that run here to the top, be using uh, some GPU risers, although, sorry, I got a bunch of extras left over of one and a half millimeter, as you can see some here and a bunch here. I'm just going to cut them up to uh, make them work right. Okay, probably a C minus in aesthetic quality, but still A plus for the pads themselves. They will definitely keep this unit cool. So let's go ahead, take this, plug in both fans. One, two. Here comes the foam part, putting it down without pinching the wires, those two bends. Now you can use a small screwdriver to get these screws in, but to torque them down, you need a big one because these are pretty soft metal. You'll strip them out really quick. Absolutely perfect. Let me get a power supply and a ethernet cable and see if we get this powered on, Let's see if we can fire it up. Okay, so I got an ethernet plugged into the back of the unit itself right here. And this is a stock power brick we're using. It's just a 120 watt one. So once this gets fired up, I need to get into the web GUI for this and flash the BIOS or revert the BIOS back to stock. So this way it'll run okay and not burn up my power supply in the long term. So without further ado, let's give it some power. And we got a blue light in there. So that's a great sign. You flip it around a little bit. We can see red and green. And just give it a few seconds for it to start up here and we'll hit the web GUI. 
Okay, so it's running perfectly fine after five minutes, getting a little warm as normal because there's no external fan. Uh, it's just got the two little 40 millimeters that come stock with it running on it right now. Uh, got it back to stock firmware using Ice River's uh, tool program, whatever it is. And now I am in T-Swiss program just so I can monitor it. And we can see uh, five minute hash rate, 206 giga hash, perfectly fine. Voltages are all good. Temperatures are all good. They're climbing up a little bit because he does not have the external fan on it. But everything is good and working. These are definitely the factory ones <laughs> that come with the uh, stock firmware. So he'll have to go and throw his own uh, information back in here when he gets it. But this repair is done. Thank you very much, Serpent X, for allowing me to do this repair and do the video for it. And shout out to Tains, because he's the one who actually found the replacement connector for me on DigiKey before I could even find it. He's uh, really good in his Google Foo. <laughs> Any which way, take it easy, everyone. Don't use 12 volts on these. Even on stock, you really shouldn't. Just don't use 12 volts on KS0 Pros, please. You're going to have this problem one sooner or later. Take it easy. Thank you.